What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And today we are going to discuss the Chris Pronger trade, which occurred back on July 3rd, 2006. Now this original trade was between the Anaheim Ducks and the Edmonton Oilers and saw Anaheim acquire the aforementioned defenseman, Chris Pronger. Now, this is an interesting trade. This trade happened right after the Oilers became very close to winning the Stanley Cup. Now, what apparently why this trade happened is because Pronger's wife was upset with Edmonton. She didn't like the environment. Obviously, Edmonton is the northernmost team in the NHL. And uh, Chris Pronger's wife didn't like it. I don't know if she didn't like the cold weather or what, but he demanded a trade. The GM said it was for, quote, personal reasons, but then it was later announced that it was because his wife basically told him, I don't like being in Edmonton. So Pronger demanded a trade. As a result, he became public enemy number one in Edmonton. So, yeah. Now, Edmonton was able to get five assets for Pronger. Now, first, we're going to discuss the Anaheim Ducks as they're the ones who got Chris Pronger. So Pronger, he had a great season in the 06-07 campaign for the Ducks as his leadership and his presence both on and off the ice were instrumental to the team. Now, he, spent, he scored 13 goals to go with 46 assists while averaging 27 minutes per game. Now, he would step up in the playoffs as he would score another three goals with another 12 assists over an average of 30 minutes a game. Now, he, once more, was instrumental in the Ducks winning the Stanley Cup that year. Now, he was named the captain of the Ducks prior to the 2007-2008 campaign as Captain Scott Niedermeyer sat out while contemplating retirement. Of course, he was thinking about wanting to go out on top. Made sense. Now, pro what happened is he had a decent year. He recorded 128 penalty minutes, but his other stats fell off. Now, Pronger became the alternate captain before the 08-09 campaign after Niedermeyer returned to the team. Now, Pronger did well that year, and the Ducks did make more of a run in the playoffs, but they still fell flat in the cup. Now, he was traded away as Anaheim was looking to restock for the future. Still, though, over three years, he was a one-time All-Star and a one-time Stanley Cup champion. Now, of course, like I said, his impact to the championship can never be under... You know, I can't write down what he did. I can't, you know, stats don't tell it. He was a great leader for this team on and off the ice. Now, he's traded to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for four assets. Now, one asset here is left-wing Joffrey Lupul. Now, the Oilers originally got Lupul in the original trade here, which we will get to shortly, but you'll notice he was a right wing there and a left wing here. At this stage in his career, Lupul had become a left wing, so I just want to get that out of the way. Anyway, back in Anaheim, Lupul had an injury-prone year and a half for the team, and he did have a blood infection, which forced him to miss a chunk of time before he was traded once more. And he's traded with two other assets to the Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for a defenseman, Francois Beauchemin. Now, Beauchemin was a welcomed defensive force in Anaheim for four and a half years. He served in a top four defensive role and was consistently among team leaders in blocks and ice time. Over those four and a half years, he recorded 633 blocks and 489 hits. Now, he would walk after this four and a half years, and he was a one-time All-Star. So, pretty solid out of him. Now, they also got defenseman Luca Spiza. Now, Spiza served five years as a defensively-minded defenseman. He had a breakout year in the 2011-2012 campaign where he potted five goals to go with 19 assists, but his other four years saw him combined for four goals and 21 assists. Now, all said and done, he had 181 penalty minutes and 542 hits. Now, he ends up getting traded. In an effort to make this video shorter, that trade is included in a future video, which will be the Ron Kessler trade, so stay tuned for that one. Now, they also got some draft picks here. So, the 2009 first-round pick became the 21st overall selection, and this pick gets traded to Columbus. So, with, what they would do is they would, get the, they would give up the 21st for the 26th and 37th picks. The 26th pick was used on right-wing Kyle Palmieri. Now, Kyle Palmieri was a solid player for parts of five years in Anaheim, scoring 43 goals with 46 assists across 198 games for the team. Now, he ends up getting traded, and this trade will get its own video as well, as there's, of course, another more recent trade that saw it. So I figured, you know what, let's combine the two. We will do that after 
you know, it, after this video is posted in a little bit in the future. Now with the 37th pick, they would select it, defenseman Matt Clark. Now, Matt Clark spent most of five years in the AHL slash ECHL for the Ducks. He only played two games at the NHL level, and then he ends up getting traded. Now, this trade is a very minor trade. I didn't feel like it was worth discussing. It was basically swapping ECHL players, so didn't want to make it. Didn't want to waste you guys' time with that one. Now, after that, the, the Anaheim Ducks also got the 29th pick in the 2010 NHL draft. And with that pick, they would select right wing Emerson Atem. Now, Atem, for the Ducks, he has three serviceable years in Anaheim as a bottom six forward, recording 15 goals and 16 assists before being traded. Now, this trade will be discussed in the future Kyle Palmieri video, so stay tuned for that as he was bundled with a pick that's included in that trade. So, yeah. So, that covers Anaheim. How did... Edmonton do. So obviously you can see I have a lot of words left. So Edmonton was uh, pretty busy. So the first player that they got here was right wing Joffrey Lupul. Now, interestingly enough, Lupul was a rising star before this trade and he was from the Edmonton area. His grandfather was actually a part time or a part owner of the franchise. So yeah, so he was definitely a hometown guy. It was kind of like a safe move for Edmonton to get him. How did he do? He spent a single year in Edmonton scoring 16 goals before he was traded away. Now he is traded away alongside another player to Philadelphia in exchange for three players. Now one of these players, left wing Joff Sanderson, is actually a former Hartford Whaler. So I just want to get that out there. So Sanderson, he recorded three goals with 10 assists in 41 games before he was waived. It was towards the end of his career. He wasn't doing that great. So yeah, they also got defenseman Yoni Pikkanen. Now, Pickenin served as a solid scoring threat from the blue line for a season where he scored eight goals with 18 assists before he was traded away. He is traded to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for left wing Eric Cole. Now, Cole had a solid three quarter season with the Oilers where he would score 16 goals with 11 assists before he was traded. Now, this trade is discussed in the future Justin Williams trade. So, once more, stay tuned for that. I know this trade breakdown would be a lot longer if I didn't break it up a bit. So, yeah. Now, lastly, in this original trade here from Lupul, the Edmonton Oilers would also get a 2009 third round pick, which would become the 82nd overall. With that selection, they would select, or with that pick, they would select right wing Cameron Abney. Now, Abney bounced around the ECHL for a few years before leaving the team. So now we have defenseman Vladislav Schmidt from the original Chris Pronger trade here. And Schmidt spent seven and a half years as a lockdown, defensive-minded defenseman for the Oilers. He added very little in terms of offense, only 11 goals and 54 assists across those seven and a half years. But he recorded 680 blocks and 798 hits. Now, he ends up getting traded away. And he is traded to the Calgary Flames, along with one other player, in exchange for center Roman Horik and goaltender Laurent Brussel. So center uh, Roman Hork. Hork, he spent most of a single year in the AHL, but he did score a single goal across his two games at the NHL level before he ends up leaving the team. Now, the goaltender Laurent Brussel, he spent five years in the organization, but he was mostly an AHL player for the Oilers. He went 7-13 and as a starter in the NHL, and then he would walk as a free agent. So, not the greatest haul, but it is what it is. Then you have the three draft picks that the Oilers got in this trade. So, the first one that we're going to discuss is the 2007 first round pick, which became the 30th overall pick. That pick gets traded to Arizona. Now, Edmonton traded up and they got the 21st pick. With that selection, they would choose center Riley Nash. And Riley Nash never played for the team as, you know, they were having trouble with contract negotiations. And they traded him, they traded his rights, I should say to Carolina in exchange for a 2010 second round pick, which was the 46th overall pick. With that pick, they would select defenseman Martin Mar Mar Marinson. And uh, Marinson, he scored a single goal with 10 assists over two seasons where he mostly contributed on defense before he was traded away. And he's traded to Toronto in exchange for left wing Brad Ross on the draft pick. So left wing Brad Ross, he chose to play overseas after a brief 15 game stint in the ECHL. Now that 2015 fourth round pick would become the 107th pick. 
That pick would be traded to the Ottawa Senators alongside a player in exchange for defenseman Eric Graba. And Graba was a defensive-minded defenseman for three years for the Oilers before he was bought out. So, yeah. Um, next, we have the last two picks here from the original Chris Pronger trade. And the 2008 first-round pick would become the 22nd overall selection. That would be used to pick right-wing Jordan Eberle. And Jordan Eberle, he spent parts of three years in the WHL and the AHL before he was called up for the 2010-11 campaign, where he took on an important role right away. A solid year saw him record 18 goals with 25 assists. Now, he broke out in the 2011-12 season with 34 goals, which is career high, and 42 assists. Now, he had a respectable next four years in Edmonton, where he recorded a combined total of 93 goals and 119 assists across 278 games in that time span. Now, he did underachieve slightly in the 2016-17 season, where he scored 20 goals and 31 assists. Now, what really got to him was in the playoffs across 13 games, he only managed to get two points, both were from assists. So the Edmonton faithful had turned on him. As a result, he ends up getting traded. This will get its own trade breakdown in the future. He was a one-time All-Star for Edmonton. So lastly, we have that 2008 second round pick, which was the 53rd overall pick. This gets traded to the New York Islanders for the 73rd pick in 2008 and a player. So the 73rd pick, I mentioned this in the Roberto Luongo trade. So here it is. This pick wasn't officially traded, but, you know, it was, but what the Oilers end up doing with that 73rd pick is they essentially, they don't trade it, but they do. So they would sign a restricted free agent named Donald Penner, who was a left wing. As a result, the NHL told him you have to give up compensation. They gave up that third round pick. So it wasn't officially a trade, but the Oilers received left wing Donald Penner as a restricted free agent in exchange for a draft pick. So... The draft pick that they got here, once more, was essentially traded to Edmonton for a restricted free agent. So how did left wing Donald Pano do in Edmonton? Well, he was he was something. So he had a solid three and a half years in Edmonton, and he recorded 93 goals, 93 assists over 304 games before he ends up getting traded. And he's traded to the LA Kings in exchange for three assets. One was defenseman Colin Tubert, and Tubert would appear in 24 games for the organization before, or for the team, before he left to play overseas. They also got two draft picks, one of which was a 2011 first round pick, which would become the 19th overall selection. With that, they would go with defenseman Oscar Kleffbaum, and Kleffbaum has been a solid defenseman since debuting in the 2013-14 season. He doesn't focus on offense as much as you might think. He has 34 goals and 122 assists, but he has contributed an, a mind-boggling 753 blocks to go with 253 hits across 378 games. Now, he missed all of the 2021 season with a shoulder injury, so that's why you didn't hear about him. Still, it makes you wonder how Edmonton might have done in the playoffs and all of a sudden done if Clefbaum was there because he's a key piece of that team. Now, they also got a 2012 third-round pick, which became the 91st overall selection. With that pick, Edmonton would select a left wing, Danel Zarkov, and Zarkov never signed with the team, so he was a Russian prospect, and he just went to Russia, never coming stateside. Now, the team also got defenseman Alan Rourke here in exchange for the 53rd pick, and Alan Rourke, he spent one year bouncing between the NHL and the AHL, spending a lot of time in the AHL before he would walk. So that covers the Oilers and the Ducks. Hold the Ducks for a minute. How did the other teams involved do? We will start with the Flyers as they got Chris Pronger. So Pronger immediately signed a massive seven-year contract extension to stay with the Flyers. So he ends up helping big time. And the 09-2010 season was a strong one for Pronger as he recorded 10 goals, 45 assists, and 189 blocks. Now he had four goals and 14 assists in the playoffs as the Flyers would make a surprising run to the Stanley Cup as a seventh seed, but they would lose that Stanley Cup final. After the playoffs, Pronger would undergo knee surgery, and then he was limited to 50 games in the 2010-11 season due to numerous injuries, but he still put up respectable numbers. Now he was named the captain of the Flyers before the 2011-12 season. However, the 2011-12 season would prove to be disastrous for Pronger as he began to suffer from post-concussion syndrome. 
He also had problems with his vision after he took a hockey stick to the red eye. It was a freak accident. So he only played in 13 games for the Flyers that year. And he would step down as captain after he was clear to him that he would not be able to continue playing. He did stay in the organization, though, and he served as a scout for a few years. Now, he would end up seeing his contract traded. Obviously, we were not discussing that. So we did discuss that in a previous video. Actually, I'll put that link in the description below. I don't recall exactly which video it was. But so, you know, it was unfortunate, but he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. It was a nice move. I was very happy to see him inducted. It was always going to happen, but he's probably the most known Whalers draft pick in NHL history. So definitely stay tuned. There will at some point be a player bio about him. Now the Flyers were also involved in a secondary trade here where they got, oh, I'm sorry, I completely missed. They also got center Ryan Dingle here and Dingle was so inconsequential. He only spent a single year in the AHL before he walked. Now we get to the secondary trade where the Flyers got right wing Joffrey Lupo. And Lupo, so he had a respectable two-year stint in Philly, which saw him record 45 goals and 51 assists over 135 games. Now, he is more noticeable as he scored a series-winning goal in the 2007-2008 playoffs. Now, he ends up getting traded after the 2008-2009 season. So, yeah, that was discussed right up here. But, interesting. Now, they also got defenseman Jason Smith. Now, Smith served as a leader for a single season for the team as he helped to turn around a rebuilding Flyers team to an Eastern Conference Finals run before he would walk as a free agent. So that covers Philadelphia. How did the other teams involved do? So we'll, we'll go with Toronto next. They got left wing Jeffrey Lupro. Now, I mentioned before that he moved to left wing. He moved to left wing when he came here to Toronto. He had a mildly productive five and a half years in Toronto where he res registered 88 goals and 94 assists across 280 games before the team, before he essentially had to retire due to injuries, unfortunately for him. They also got defenseman Jake Gardner in this trade. Now, Gardner played eight strong seasons for Toronto, playing both offensively and defensively. Always good to have an offensive-minded defenseman. Now, he, has, he recorded 45 goals and 200 assists to go with 550 hits and 592 blocks, before walking as a free agent. And then that 2013 fourth round pick, 113th, ends up getting traded. We will not be discussing that. So, yes. Uh, we also have the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, they got defenseman Yoni Pickinen. Now, Pickinen for Toronto, or for um, Carolina, sorry. He had a strong first three years in Carolina before the injury set in. And he struggled to see ice time over his last three years with the team before he had to, before he walked, because it was clear to him that he wasn't needed there. Now, they also got center Riley Nash. Now, Riley Nash, he ended up being a decent player. He would sign very quickly with the team. And he, um, he had a solid 31 goals and 50 assists for the team over six years before he walked as a free agent. Uh, well, I got them on the screen here. We got the Arizona Coyotes, who got a pair of draft picks in 2007. So with those two picks, Arizona, with the 30th pick, would select defenseman Nick Ross. Ross spent very little time in the system, usually playing for the WHL, before his contract expired and he walked. The 36th pick was used on goaltender Joel Gitstead. And Gitstead spent a handful of games in the U.S., but he would eventually leave to play overseas. So nothing amazing with him, unfortunately. Uh, next, we have the Columbus Blue Jackets, who got a 2009 draft pick, the 21st overall pick. With that pick, they would select defenseman John Moore. Now, he spent two and a half years in Columbus, putting up pedestrian numbers, only two goals and six assists, over 86 games before he was traded away. We will not be discussing that trade in this video. Now, we also have Calgary. Calgary got defenseman Vladislav Smit. And uh, Smit, he still played strong defense, but his play was slowed in the latter part of his three and a half year stint with the Calgary Flames due to injuries. And, and uh, he ended up managing only a single goal to go with six assists, as well as 221 blocks and 231 hits over 109 games for Calgary. Now, he missed all of his last season due to the back injury, and then he would walk as a free agent. Now, they also got goaltender Olivier Roy, 
Hua and Hua spent a single year in the season before walking as a free agent. So that's Calgary. Edmonton, or sorry, New York Islanders would get a 2008 53rd overall pick. With that pick, they would select defenseman Travis Hamannick. And Hamannick was a solid player. He would, he would do pretty good for the team. Um, he wasn't the best player in existence, but he was still pretty good. He, you know, he contributed on offense and defense. Now, he recorded 26 goals and 120 assists to go with a very strong 857 hits and 880 blocks. He also recorded a nice 452 penalty minutes. He would serve a single year as an alternate captain as well before he ended up getting traded away. We are not going to discuss that. We also have the, we have three more teams here. So we have the LA Kings. Let me just get them here. So they got left wing Dennis, Dustin Penner. Penner, his scoring touch regressed in LA as he only scored 11 goals over two and a half years before he would walk as a free agent. So I completely skipped over this part. Uh, defend, Toronto also got defenseman Martin Marinson, and he spent five years in the organization playing mostly third line minutes, third line minutes before he walked. And lastly, I have Edmund, I have Anaheim here. Anaheim got a 2008 pick, the 73rd overall pick. This pick would be traded. As Anaheim is a secondary team in this trade, we will not be discussing it. Now, this was one of the longer trade breakdowns. I apologize for kind of stumbling over my words periodically here, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yeah, this was Chris Pronger trade. Have a good rest of your day.